It's the 150th anniversary of the reunion of Italy, and a sports event has come to Torino that it's probably one of the most important ever in this historic city of Torino. We'll crown new world champions in our sport, combining precision, intensity, elegance, and fair play. And we'll also allocate 35 places out of 64 per gender for the 2012 Olympic Games. It's also the first world championships to select a champion in the recurve and compound mixed team categories, a new title, hopefully someday to be added to the Olympic Games. More than 500 athletes from more than 90 countries coming to Torino, and we start out with a compound gold medal mixed team event as we're about to get underway. It is Italy's Sergio Pagni and Marcella Tonioli. Their opponents, the world record holding Peter Elzinga and Inga van Kaspel. Now, if you've ever followed World Archery's World Cup circuit, you know that Sergio Pagni is an absolute fixture, having won two World Cup Grand Finals. All of these shooters are highly accomplished and really excellent. For example, Peter Elzinga, the holder of the individual FIDA record with a 14-19 enormous score. After three ends, we've got a total of 118 for Italy, and 115 out of a possible 120 for the team from Netherlands. So Italy maintaining an advantage. Inga van Kassel just shot a nine. Peter Elzinga follows up with an arrow just out of the 10 ring that's about two millimeters out. And so Italy's got two arrows to go to close this 16 arrow, 160 point potential match. And they win it with a solid shot in the gold. Sergio Pagni and Marcella Tonioli taking home the world's first gold medal title in the mixed team event. And of course, uh, the crowd from Italy rejoicing over this uh, very first, but perhaps not the last, medal that we'll see for an Italian team here in Torino. The recurve gold medal mixed team match. It's Korea versus Mexico. And again, it's the first time that these teams have contested a mixed team against each other. Korea and Mexico, the finest shooters from both of these countries are in these mixed team events. That's important to note. Im Dong Hyung, the top qualifier for the men during this past week. Kibo Bay, the top woman. She shot an incredible score, well over the 1380 mark. Juan Rene Serrano, consistently a great shooter. Ida Roman, newly elected as the FIDA athlete rep, is also a very highly accomplished shooter. Now, after three ends, the advantage is uh, not too surprisingly for Korea by a total of three points. Juan Rene, however, delivering the goods with a solid X. And Ida? There it is, wow, what a shot. Dead center arrow from Ida Roman. Now, Im Dong Hyung has also just absolutely delivered throughout this match. Kibo Bay a little looser on the shots. She had her share of arrows out in the red, as you can see, but this really puts them into solid position right now, putting a lot of pressure on Mexico. They've gotta be able to keep up what they've just started by shooting nothing but tens, and that is a falter. You know Juan Rene is not happy with that shot. Now, if Ida can deliver a 10, it'll keep the pressure up, but no, not good enough. And so it really leaves the door open for Im Dong Hyung and Kibo Bay to close the door on Mexico with the next two shots. Even though Kibo Bay is not shooting as well as she normally does, she sure finishes well enough. And here's the last shot. And that delivers it. That is 40 out of 40 points and a perfect score to finish. Obviously, a well-earned gold medal, again, an historic gold medal, the first for Korea in the mixed team category at a world championships. And of course, a great achievement for Mexico to win the silver here. Uh. The compound women's team gold medal match pits two experienced teams that have come up against each other before. The United States of America team and the Islamic Republic of Iran team. The band of sisters from the United States of America the band of sisters of Erica Anschutz, Christy Collin, and Jamie Van Natta. These three have been competing together for well over 18 months as an integrated team. Meanwhile, Iran has been sending the same shooters to World Championship events and World Cup events for the last few years. That is Sedja Vida Halaminaval and Parsimir Matab and Shabnam Sarlak, all of whom have made it to finals in various events. And so 
two highly experienced teams, a great rivalry. But right now, USA in a commanding position. They've really got a bit of an advantage over Iran, and you can see why. Look at the arrows from the Iranian target out in the red, particularly on the right-hand target. Those are costly, especially that seven. You can't get away with seven. Here's Jamie Van Natta, solid 10, only a couple arrows out of the gold for the Americans. Really, that is the difference in the score between these two teams. You see those two arrows out in the gold for Iran just on one target, another arrow out, out of the gold on the other target, and you just know that that is too much for them to overcome. With only one arrow left, USA has it in the bag with a hit. That's all they need, and there it is. Erica Anschutz delivering the goods for the United States. 231 points and victory for the USA. Silver medal for Iran. Thank you, ladies. Hey, you guys grab your bows. Do you need the pitch? You got to hold the bows up in the air. Dean's right here. I think that any of these teams could beat us any day. It's just on, on a day that we can be as great as we can be together. And that's what makes us a great team. No doubt about it. The American women are a great team. And so are the American men consistently now for the last few years. The American men have found themselves in the exact position they're in right now, shooting for the gold medal. This time, their opponent is Denmark. Strong American team, Jesse Broadwater, Braden Galantine, and of course, the reigning champion of the world at this point in the championship, Rio Wild. And their opponent is Denmark, Martin Damsbo and Torben Johansson and Patrick Larson. These three guys are also a highly integrated team. They've got lots of experience shooting together. Uh, certainly, Martin Damsbo, the most accomplished archer in Danish history, but the other two guys know slouches. Now, at this point in the match, USA is leading Denmark by five, 179 of a possible 180 from USA. Talk about solid shooting. Denmark also delivering the goods on this next to last end here. And so when they finish out with 10-10-10, that's going to put at least some pressure on the Americans. But the truth is, at this stage, these guys are going to have to make a big mistake to lose. And look at that target. Nothing but 10s. Jesse Broadwater puts it in the X ring on top of his teammate's arrow. And Rio Wild, that is how you win a world championship. 239 tying their own world record set earlier in the week. Team USA, one point shy of perfect. What can you do against that? Uh, our training and preparation is by far the best in the world. And it's, we're, we're true professionals at this. Uh, there's really no egos or anything. Um, we, we know what we're capable of, and we come out and we perform. They most certainly do, at least as a team. Now, the Americans had not so much luck individually this time around. It's the bronze medal match, and we are seeing the top American, Erica Anschutz. Obviously, she'd rather be shooting for gold, but here she is shooting for bronze against the Islamic Republic of Iran's Power Samir Matab, who has been doing very well. She's ranked sixth in the world now. And so it's Power Samir versus Erica Anschutz who's ranked second in the world, by the way, so clearly her being in a bronze medal match is a bit of a disappointment, but there's nothing disappointing about winning a medal at the world championship. After four ends, Erica Anschutz in a good position to do just that. She's got a three-point advantage on her opponent. Here's Parsimir. She shoots a nine. As you can see, her target looks pretty good, but you can't afford arrows out in the red when you're shooting against a top American like Erica Anschutz. And Erica is about to try to close the door on her opponent from Iran. Park Samir putting out another arrow in the eight ring, opening the door. You just can't do that when you're shooting against Erica Anschutz. Because Erica will absolutely keep them in the middle under pressure. Here comes the last arrow. You see Park Samir, she knows. And all she needed to do was shoot an eight to win, and Erica Anschutz takes it home with solid shooting, a good performance, maybe a little disappointed with that bronze medal, and Parsmere, no doubt, more disappointed to be fourth. Yeah. Compound gold medal women's individual match pits, the amazing Pascal Lebec of France versus the reigning champion of the world there on the left, that is Albina Loginova. Albina, a force to be reckoned with. She is absolutely dominant. Now, here's Pascal Lebec. She's 17th in the world, but that's a little deceptive. She's been on a roll lately. She shot really well at the World Cup in Turkey last month. Now, Albina 
Calm, cool, collected, and determined to keep her world title. No question about that. She's made some big changes since we last saw her in Korea at the World Championships, including a new bow sponsor, and now she is at the top of her form. Pascal just made a critical error, the first mistake, and it could be the most costly one of her career so far. You simply cannot shoot a seven in a world title match, especially with a couple arrows to go. It is just not going to work. Got it. Nice recovery, though. Last shot for the championship of the world. And the door is wide open. Six-point differential. All Albina has to do is hit it, and there it is. Albina Lognova retaining her world title, the first archer in history in the compound women's category for a back-to-back -back world championship title. What an achievement. Last time, before the previous world championship, I was absolutely sure I would win. This time I was not so sure, but I had a hope. I trained a lot, for sure much more than before the previous world championship in 2009. And today I was in a good shape, and I did my best. My name is Drew Wild. Uh, I'm in the men's compound division, and I'm from the United States. And I just set the new 50 meter double uh, 72 arrow record. We shoot around at 50 meters, a possible score of 720. Uh, I ended up missing six points for a 714. I knew uh, 711 was a good score for the old record, but I wanted to get it up a little higher so that maybe it was tougher for people to reach. Uh, we had three guys in the U.S. tie it last week, so it was kind of good to get it a little higher. I have a lot of good teammates. Uh, in fact, I think a lot of what helped me get to the record just the other day was my teammate Jesse Broadwater was shooting really well, so he pushed me because I really want to be on the mixed team, and so it pushed me to shoot even better. So it was a, it's a big part of that. And with everybody else, like I say, we have a lot of great shooters on, so it's just it's pretty easy to do. My goal wasn't the record. My goal was to come here and win. Uh, I won two years ago in Olson Korea, so I really wanted to defend, so I put a lot of work into coming here and just to give myself a chance to win. I mean, that's all you can ask. It was not to be. Rio Wild went out in the semifinal and did not make it to the gold medal round. Would not be able to try to keep his world record, world title. And uh, an unfortunate thing for somebody with 10 world championships who comes from a family with all kinds of world championships, his legendary father, D. Seven world titles alone. But Rio Wild is about to take his disappointment and turn it into something special for the crowd. This is Rio Wild against Gabriel Badenhorst in the bronze medal match. An un unquestionably upset and maybe even a little angry Rio Wild. Now, maybe that's a strong word to use for Rio. Everybody that knows Rio knows he doesn't really get angry. But wait till you see what he's about to do to this target. Now, as we move into this thing after four ends, you see Rio with a perfect score of 120 points. He opened up with three X's. He's got a ton of X's on this target. Now, you have to keep in mind, just last week, he set the world record 150 with 10 X. Here he is obviously trying to go for it again. Look at that X count. Gabriel is just being swamped. He's shooting well, but Rio is just putting on a show here. There's an arrow out of the gold, so no record today. But the crowd is just loving what they're seeing, and Rio's feeling better about the whole thing, too. I think the comment at the time was something along the lines of, wow, what a tough crowd. The guy's one point shy of perfect. Just absolutely swamping his opponent from South Africa, who actually put in a great effort. But Rio just unstoppable. One point shy of a perfect score. And there it is with his brother, uh, Logan, one of the top shooters in the world, coaching him through this. Uh, Gabriel Badenhorst has nothing to be ashamed of, but bronze medal for Rio Wild. Well, yeah, that's a disappointment for him, but uh, a special occasion nonetheless for the crowd. In the compound gold medal match, here are the guys who had the opportunity that, that Rio really wanted. And it's one of the most remarkable stories. Christopher Perkins of Canada will tell you about him in a moment. Jesse, the freak show Broadwater, will be his opponent. Now, Chris Perkins is a junior level shooter, and he's already shot over 1,400 points, which is a big benchmark. Jesse Broadwater, highly experienced. He has shot in Europe many times before. He is one of the uncontested top guys in America. And of course, 
one of the men who set the new world record on the American team earlier in the week. Up against Chris Perkins right now, and Jesse is in trouble. This kid is good. Chris has tied Jesse. Both of these guys shooting tens, and they're going to have to keep it up. Jesse is uh, it's feeling the pressure. Chris just looks unflappable. Lots of liners. Look at all those liners that Chris Perkins shot. Jar liquor, as the compound guys like to call them. You just saw the most expensive arrow in Jesse Broadwater's career. It actually bounced off one of his arrows, glancing out. And Chris Perkins shoots a solid arrow and takes the championship of the world. Unbelievable. This kid from Canada can shoot. Sorry, man. Oh. Jesse Broadwater, USA. An incredible nice. achievement. Chris Play Perkins. qualifying fifth and then continuing on to quarterfinals, semifinals, and then obviously to, you know, the gold medal match and winning the gold medal, is, it's, you know, unbelievable. You know, the, the week went fabulous and, you know, it just ended with another great ending. What a great week of compound competition in Torino. Now on to the recurves for the gold medal final, and this is a hot race. It's going to be two of the best recurve teams consistently that we've ever seen. Now you'll notice it's not the Koreans, it's India and Italy. Korea has had nothing but a rough week here in Torino. No single Korean woman making it into the individual finals for the first time in something like 30 years at a world championship. This gold medal team of Italy, Natalia Voleva, Jessica Tomasi, two world champions, plus Gwendolina Sartori, really excellent, and they are showing it. They are in position right now with a lead of four points in the last end against India to try to take everything. But the pressure is starting to show. The Indians are still shooting pretty consistently, lots of nines. Now, honestly, no tens is a little surprising, but India... Nines will do it. Sebastian Flute won the Barcelona Olympic Games with nothing but nines, and India is on a path to try to do the same thing. Italy had made a mistake on the first three arrows. You see that seven there on the target? Now watch this. Another arrow out there opening the door for India, potentially. This really is going to put a lot of extra pressure on the last shooter for Italy. She is going to have to deliver. Well, guess who that last shooter is? It's none other than this woman, Natalia Voleva. And that is what you expect from Natalia Voleva. She delivers a 10 to win the championship for Italy. Just what you'd expect from somebody with seven world titles of her own. bit of tension at the beginning so that one I think was a bit difficult to to keep concentrate uh, especially the first round and then uh, we follow to keep more focus and to going on and just think about to shoot and not what the thing was around. World field champion Jessica Tomasi there for Italy. The recurve gold medal match for the gentlemen, certainly contested by teams that you would expect to see, France and Korea. No doubt about it, the Korean women had a tough week, but you had exactly what you'd expect out of the men from the team of Korea. These are some serious shooters. Oh Jin Hyuk, Kim Woo Jin, and Im Dong Hyung. Meanwhile, the French sending their A team, headed up by no less than Roman Giroul and Jean Charles Veladon. Gail Prevost, a more recent addition, but he's showing tremendous promise. And here we go. After three ends, it is honestly, well, Korea is running away with this thing. Six point advantage with just a few shots left. The French are going to have to do everything they can to try to keep it going, and it's not good enough. J JC shooting himself an eight there. Gail, well, a solid nine. And Roman gets ready to shoot, and uh, he's got an absolutely plant an arrow in the 10 ring if he really wants to keep pressure going on the Koreans. It's the only way to beat them in a situation like this is just put pressure on them. Can he do it? Well, that was a long hold, but it was a solid 10. Kim Woo Jin, nine points. 
Im Dong Hyun getting up there. Boy, they're shooting steady. These Korean men are just solid today. And there's Oh Jin Hyuk. And there's a 10 from Mr. Oh. Boy, that man has been shooting some 10s today. And that is why we're seeing the situation we are seeing right now. It is a seven point lead for Korea, and you can't shoot eights when the Koreans have got seven points on you and you've got three arrows left in your quiver. It's just not going to win. Final regulation arrow for France. <laughs> Long hold, four seconds left, but again, Roman, both arrows in the 10 ring. All Korea has to do now, though, is basically shoot decently. They have as much as a potential nine-point win in the bag. There's a nine. Now it's an eight-point situation. There's a nine. Now it's seven points that they've got to shoot. In other words, they've got to shoot a four or better. There you have it. Done deal. Another 10 from Oh Jin Hyuk and Korea taking home the gold and a little bit of Korean pride coming back to Korea after the first time the Korean women didn't make it into the finals individually in 30 years. Boy, that raised a lot of trouble back home in the media. Korean men doing just fine and uh, shooting just like we expect. So this rematch of the last world championship repeated the same way now as we told you it's been something like 30 years since we have not seen a korean in at least the semi-finals of a world championship instead here we've got two surprising shooters this woman denise astrid van lamon of chile she's actually been training in korea under renowned korean coach kim hyung tak and it has obviously paid off because here she is at the gold medal final. Christina Sabua has a long list of accomplishments in international archery. Not a lot of wins, but boy, she's got lots of experience. And they've got a Korean coach in Georgia as well as part of Olympic Solidarity. So that's not hurting their performance one bit. Now, Denise is dominating the match so far. She's got an advantage in the set points. Now, remember, we're shooting set play here. That means each end counts as a set. If you win the end on raw score, you get two set points. As you can see, Denise has got four, and Christine has got two. So the first archer to reach six set points is the winner. In order to do that, you just need to win one more set, and you take the match if you are Denise Van Lamoen. Christina Sabua shooting reasonably well. Denise has just got the extra edge, and right now, all she needs is a nine, and she just took the championship of the world just an unbelievable performance from denise van lamoen little backstory as well that's martin frederick the coach for chile he, he was um well he left the dsb the the german shooting federation just a few months ago and the result is the first world title for a shooter from south america I really enjoyed the match. It was my first time at this level of competition, really. And everybody knows that, as the speaker said it all the day. I am so happy. I think I am living my dream. Well, no dream. That's a real gold medal. And here comes another recurve gold medal match. This is the gentleman's final between two of the best shooters in the world. Oh Jin Hyuk and Kim Woo Jin. Mr. Kim, the holder of the individual world record and the previous world record holder, none other than this guy, Oh Jin Hyuk. He's ranked fourth in the world right now. As I mentioned, he held the world record for a good period of time before his teammate Kim Woo Jin eclipsed it by a single point, and that was just last year. So these two guys are about as good as it gets, and we are about to see a great show. And as we move into this set play situation after three sets, the advantage is for Kim Woo Jin. Oh Jin Hyuk and Kim Woo Jin were even after the first couple sets. Now in the third set, it's a 4-2 advantage for Kim Woo Jin, and Oh Jin Hyuk is in a bit of trouble. He's really got to win this next set to keep things going. Ten. Solid shooting from Kim Woo Jin. And not a bad performance there from Oh Jin Hyuk either. Wow. You'll notice a few more tens in the target for Kim Woo Jin, though. And that is the difference here. Uh, oh Jin Hyuk's 10 count, it is not as high as that of his, of his teammate. He's in the gold a lot, but he's feeling a little tension. You know, and he comes into the shot. You don't see it in these uh, television images necessarily. Comes into the shot a little loosely. 
Kim Woo Jin showing why he is the world record holder and right now the best guy in the world. Kim Woo Jin and a silver medal for Oh Jin Hyuk. Nothing to sneeze at. A big achievement once again for the Korean men. It was a hard match for me because I know my opponent very well. We have the same technical preparation, but I think today the mental preparation made the difference. Actually, I feel a little bit lucky with that victory. And so we come to a close with 562 athletes, 90 countries, world titles, including new titles of mixed team champions of the world. Shock for Korea, no one in the final in the women's category. A new world champion from South America, first back-to-back -back women's compound champion ever, Albina Loginova. Chris Perkins, the junior shooter who would be number one among the masters of archery. What a week. And a great performance from the Italian Federation putting on one of the best world championships ever. Well, now we're done with the world championships and we're getting ready for World Cup again. We'll see you from Ogden soon. Thanks for joining us.